about if you, the three of you put on your sort of your your you know crystal, you look at your crystal balls and think you know what, what's what's going to be happening with this three to five years from now? Will will we look back and, and think, gosh, the idea that there was any confusion or complication with big data, what a what a quaint idea we've come so far from that, or what what, what are we going to th be thinking about in terms of big data, say three to five years from now? And, Tina, what, what's your take on that? I think the holistic intelligence is in gathering everything that's possibly can be gathered, whether it's a website, every single click, whether it's IoT, every single thing that happens around every single device. I think that really go, is going to go mainstream because uh, you've seen companies like you know, the Google acquisition Nest that uh, essentially transformed an industry that hasn't changed in almost 100 years, right? which is the ability to holistically understand what's going on. Um, and so more and more companies are starting to figuring out that um, holistic data gathering, just being greedy with data collection, and being able to experiment with that data and to loop that data analytics back into product is really going to differentiate these companies. Um, and as more and more companies are getting into that space, uh, the more and more companies em embrace that level of thinking, um, the companies that are not doing that are going to be in a little bit of trouble. Yeah, I think about uh, there, what you said reminds me of the Waze app that you know incorporates. It's like social media and traffic, so it's all a loop. The information is is a real time loop that is helping drivers, who would then turn you know put more information in. So it's actually it's the uh, the information always feeds on itself in, in a real time loop. Yep. Uh, Sutton, your your sense of uh, five years out, big data. Where 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 are we going with all this? Yeah, I mean we we talk a lot about this theme of sort of everybody being an analyst. I mean, if we think about kind of a lot of the evolutions with software, you know, whether it's, um, you know, the spreadsheet that made everybody sort of capable of being a financial analyst, or if you think about things like Adobe Photoshop and everybody being, you know, sort of a photographic editor, um, you know, I think, I think we think that there's sort of this, this notion that, you know, to do your job, you will have to effectively become a data analyst. And in a world where, you know, data is a fundamental part of decision making and a fundamental part of how you think about what you what you do, you know, that's going to tax um, the systems to be significantly easier, significantly more transparent, um, and there's going to be a large element of collaboration that's involved in this because being able to validate things and test your hypotheses in part have to do with, you know, sort of dealing with data and mining the data and figuring out what the, you know, distribution looks like, but it's also about talking to your colleagues and figuring out that you're coming up with the right hypotheses, and so, you know, we see a lot around sort of broadening the skill set around who can become an analyst. I think decrypting the data scientist is something that's going to happen by and large because ideally anybody who has a hypothesis should be able to, as you might at Google, you know, sort of test it and validate it. Um, and then beyond that, I think we see sort of a world where the tooling is going to get just simpler and simpler. So I, I don't think we're, you know, the, the technologies that exist today are only going to get stronger, and I think we're going to see more and more technology you know, really to the point is kind of the Moore's Law. I mean, it's just going to become, you know, more scalably easy to test the hypothesis to assemble an insight. Yeah, it reminds me, I, I saw this uh, video recently of Gartner and the Gartner Research Aid Firm, and they were talking about they had taken big data off the, uh, off of their hype cycle because big data is, is, is being broken up and be, is being incorporated into so many different elements that it is standalone, but it's but it's also incorporated so many elements. It's it's not totally standalone, and it's sort of on the flip side of that is what you're saying is we all need to be data scientists. There there isn't just a small tribe of people known as data scientists. In the future, you know, many more of us will need to be data data scientists. Yeah, um, please and go I, on. I, yeah. I think Mike's point. I mean, there's this notion of sort of he was thinking. I think time to you know, I'd say time to insight is the appropriate metric, and I think in a world where if, if there is only a small amount of data scientists, that's a pretty sad world that we live in. I think, I think that you know, um, I think there are visions of the world where they're controlled by computers. There are visions of the world that are controlled by humans. And you know, I think we've just got to make more people smarter in order to get to the world that I think we all uh, <laughs> ideally live in. Uh, Mike, are you ready to make more people smarter? Where where, where are we going uh, five years from now? Uh, it's again torn a little bit. I mean, I, I see great strides in machine learning coming down to the masses. You know, uh, things where you can push a button and it'll tell you what the best algorithm it is to use on your data set and and what uh, patterns can be found in there before you even think to ask the question, uh, which which is some very interesting stuff. And and the data is getting bigger. Uh, at the same time, I see. Um, the Internet of Things coming along, as you mentioned, Nest and, and some other stuff. When everything's producing data, there's going to be 
still a lot more data than what we think of as big today. And so there's going to be this race, I think, in scale. And it's possible that the service providers like Google are are, are going to prevail here simply because of that explosion in scale. There's no way people can do it on premise. And, it's, and, and, and so that's you know, a good bet there for Google. Um, but but I, you know, I, I, I'd like to say that big data is really only going to be successful uh, not just when Gartner drops it, but when we don't think of big data as big. We just think of that as data analysis. Of course, it's large, uh, and, and, and we, we have that in under our tool belt uh, as a matter of course. Um, and I go into Excel, and my Excel spreadsheet connects to some cloud data bank, and, and, and whatever I'm doing there is working on big data uh, with the same simplicity. So. I, I, I want to have Hadoop on my smartphone. Is that is that coming soon? <laughs> um, or, or some Hadoop front-facing app. Uh, <laughs> at any rate, I, I appreciate the I'm, I'm sure you can get it at Google with your smartphone. I'm sure that'll work. You, you think it's possible? Okay, I'll, I'll try that. Hadoop with friends. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank you very much for your expertise. The three of you, it was great. I, I, you know, I, I surely learned something, and uh, I will send you the link, and we can all tweet it. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you, right. guys. Thanks.